What is up everyone, welcome back to another week's video. This week I'm talking about the easiest, or in my opinion, the easiest way to rescue a capsized kayak. Just like with lots of things I talk about on this channel in terms of like kayak uh, education instruction, there's lots of different ways to achieve this goal. I'm gonna tell you the way that I think works best and that I have had most success with, and I'm not saying any of the other ways are wrong. Uh, I'm just saying this is what works best for me and I just wanna kind of get it out there um, from the get-go really because other people will will probably prefer to do it a different way uh, This week I'm just gonna be talking about this in the context of flat water kayaking So I will do a future video for applying what, what we're talking about here to white water But for today, we're just gonna talk about the fundamentals of rescuing a capsized kayak One of the first things to say when I talk about rescuing kayaks is try and take preemptive measures to reduce the amount of rescuing you have to do. The best rescue you do is one that you actually never end up having to do, right? So if you can avoid a situation where you're gonna have to rescue a kayak, um, you know, try and avoid it as much as you can. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier, a lot better, um, be a little more forward thinking in your planning and it can, can make your day better. Now that being said, there's gonna be some times when you're alone to kayak, when you're you know kayaking around with your friends, where you're gonna end up upside down and Maybe you can't roll back up yet, or someone's not there to tea rescue you, or whatever. But it, it does happen that we're out of our kayak, so I would say take preventive measures. That's like step one, try and avoid it. The next thing I would say is to make it much better for the people who are rescuing you, um, is to make sure your boat has airbags in the back. Airbags are these inflatable bags that go in the back end, the stern end of your kayak, and they basically just fill up space so that less water can go in there. Now this doesn't make such a difference for you as the swimmer per se, but if you're the rescuer, rescuing a boat with airbags is much easier than rescuing a boat without airbags because there's gonna be less water inside it, so less weight for you to deal with. And that's really, really important. So as much as I can, I always try and have airbags in my boat. As much as possible, I encourage people to have airbags in their boat. And if they don't, there's a couple of kind of like budget alternatives. You can just get a dry bag and kind of fill that with air and jam it in there. You can get a bunch of empty plastic, like gallon water bottles and just jam it in there and tie it down. So that they're not gonna like the yard sell out or whatever. But anything you can do to fill up that space a bit better, um, with air instead of water, that's gonna make the rescue easier for you down the line. So try and make sure the people who uh, you're paddling with have airbags, make sure you have airbags, and then it's just easier for, for everyone. And it's also a bit of a protection of your kayak. If you're going downstream in the, the future video we're gonna talk about, um, if your kayak's full of water and it hits a rock, it's, it's hitting it with a lot more weight. If you imagine like a kayak has 300 liters, say, of water inside it, that's 300 kilos. If it's moving downstream and a 300 kilo thing hits a, a sharp rock, that's gonna be very different to if like 100 kilos hits that rock um, and the difference between a broken boat or a not broken boat. So that's something to keep in mind. It's also a protection of your boat. So it's like airbags aren't super cheap, but they're cheaper than replacing your kayak. The next thing to think about is um, rescuing the kayak is obviously the least important thing in this rescue scenario. I like to think about our like kind of hierarchy of needs of the if putting ourselves in the position of the rescuer now. Um, obviously, the most important thing is our own personal safety. Like you should never attempt a rescue where it's going to put you in great jeopardy. So you need to keep that in mind um, and consider what's happening around you and environmental, um, you know, changes in, in weather and water levels and what, what have you. But you need to make sure you don't make the problem worse by also becoming a uh, in need of a rescue. So that's thing number one, look after yourself first. Assuming you're okay and you're in a good position, thing number two is gonna be making sure that the person who is now the victim is in good shape and they are, are safe or other people in your crew are making sure they're going to be safe or getting to shore or whatever they're, whatever safe looks like in that scenario. Obviously varies a lot scenario to scenario, but whatever safe is, that's what they need to be. And that, that's like, after yourself that's like your next your number two priority so keep that in mind like boats are replaceable it doesn't matter like you can get a new one it, you can't replace people so next up on our hierarchy of needs list is the paddle paddles are often darker colored they often blend into the water and they often have a sneaky sneaky habit of just disappearing on you and i've I shudder to think how many hours of my life I've wasted like looking at, looking out for people's paddles um, that are trying to get away and like chasing after them and, and now I've got a pretty good 
laser focus on if I see a loose paddle, um, where it's going and where it's what its trajectory is and, and getting it back really quickly. But the thing is like a paddle is going to get away from you a lot quicker than a boat. So after that, making sure that person who is the victim is safe, getting that paddle into a safe spot or at least like attached to you somehow or like on shore is the next most important thing because it's, it's going to be really difficult to continue a day if you lose a paddle. But losing a kayak is actually it's possible, but because of how big it is, it's probably gonna get jammed up somewhere not too far away. So, you know, it's easier for them to get jammed up and because they're a lot bigger, they're easier to locate. Whereas like losing a paddle is super frustrating and can be really challenging to continue your day. So, um, you know, your your own safety, your the person you're rescuing safety, the paddle, and then lastly, the boat, which we're gonna talk about now. And so on to the nitty gritty of, of rescuing a boat, now that we've kind of got all that preamble out of the way. Um, this is the specific method that I use to rescue a boat. Now when a boat's upside down, especially on flat water, uh, quite often it will have, the cockpit will be kind of flush with the water and it's sealed and it's like full of air. And this is really great because it's, it's gonna be much lighter and that's awesome. One of the main problems when we're rescuing kayaks is that they can get full of water and that water is really heavy. Um, and because of the seated position you're in, you're often not able to recruit the maximum amount of power from your legs, uh, which is like, for example, if you were in a gym and you were weightlifting, you'd be getting a lot of power from your legs to lift stuff up. You're not able to recruit because you're sitting in a kayak. So it's easy to accidentally injure your back if you're not careful. So the more we can keep that kayak full of air instead of full of water, that's great. So in, in the best case scenario, you might be able to just cruise over to that boat reach underneath it, do a quick flip over, there's almost no water inside it and you can just push it ashore. And that's, that's a great outcome if it gets to that. And now we're gonna talk about some other methodologies for if that doesn't work for you. So these are the steps I go through every time I rescue a boat. I always start with trying to line up my bow with the bow of the boat in the water. That's gonna make sense in a minute, um, but it's really important when I come up alongside it and side by side, that my bow and the bow of the boat I'm rescuing are lined up in the same direction. Next thing we're gonna do is reach across with the hand which is like furthest from the boat I'm rescuing. And I'm gonna grab it right in the front of the cockpit rim. Simultaneously with my other hand, I'm gonna be pulling up on the cockpit a little bit. And I'm just trying to keep my back straight here, my arms tucked in so that I don't strain my back too much. And all I'm trying to do is just turn that boat onto its side. If it's already full of water, turning it onto its side is gonna get a bunch of the water start coming out. And what I might do is just sit there and hold it up for a little bit and let some of that water drain out because that's gonna make my day a ton easier. Now, the next thing you're gonna do, and this is relates back to that airbags thing I was saying a second ago. So with my one hand that's holding onto the front of the cockpit rim, that's gonna be pulling kind of towards me. And with the other hand, I'm gonna reach so I'm twisting my body but keeping my back straight and I'm gonna do a pushing down motion on the back or the stern of the boat where the airbags are, right? So there shouldn't be too much water in the back end of that boat. It's gonna be mostly concentrated in the front end. So by doing that push and then unwind my body to kind of a straight position, leaving this front arm just in kind of a locked out position here in front of you, by just pushing on where the airbags are and just unwinding your body, the boat's gonna reel up, so the bow is gonna be a bit higher. It's gonna dump a ton of water out of the boat, and then it's gonna end up kind of on the front of your boat, which is kind of a, the position you want it to be in. Once it's on the front of your boat, you can just do a little wiggle, flip it upside down. You've probably got most of the water out of it. It's probably not bone dry, it doesn't matter. You've got it so it's light enough that you can just easily push it to shore. And from shore, the, the person who's the victim can gather all their things, empty their last bit of water out, and then carry on with your day. Um, don't be tempted to try and pull that boat like up onto you or even over your head. You'll see in the video here where I'm demonstrating, it's actually in front of my uh, spray deck. So I've got it way, way away from me. There's no point where my back is ever really stressed out trying to pull that up onto me. I'm really just using that twisting unwind of my body, not using my arms too much to pull or push, just twisting unwind recruiting the, the maximum amount of muscle I can in my core here. And from there, I'm able to kind of do this in a very low impact way for myself, for my body, and able to move that boat along quickly. A couple of common mistakes I see people making a lot is they have this urge to like pull that boat up on top of them or lift it overhead and empty every last 
drop of water out of it. That's not good for your back. It puts you in a really vulnerable position. You're putting a lot of weight um, in a, like a very off balance position here and you could get injured. You, you don't want to do that. So you want to be kayaking for a long time. You want to be injury free. Try and avoid those things. We're trying to recruit the maximum amount of muscles and use them in the most effective and efficient way. Uh, one thing I did want to say, as, as you can see in this video, that I'm rescuing a creek boat in a freestyle boat. Uh, it's the same technique, re regardless if you're in a freestyle boat rescuing a freestyle boat, if you're in a creek boat rescuing a creek boat, I use the exact same technique the whole time. Um, I really just wanted to do that for this video, just to demonstrate that it's not only possible, but quite easy to do, um, as long as you're using that technique that I use, or I I've described here. Um, I've, I've had a lot of time rescuing creek boats and rescuing from a freestyle boat and, and vice versa. And it's never been a problem for me, mostly just because I've practiced this method really, really, really a lot. And it was really important to me that I just show that it is, is not only possible but easy, because I know there's gonna be a bunch of people in the comments who are like, if I'd done it the other way around, uh, you know, I, I can hear the, I can hear the, I can hear the comments come in, I, I don't want to deal with it. Um, it's possible from whatever boat you're in, it's the same method, whatever boat you're in, the, you're trying to use the most amount of muscles and you're trying to use them in the most effective and efficient way possible, keeping your kind of back health and your, your spine in check as much as you can. Uh, that's the end of the video for this week. I'm gonna try and have a part two next week um, regarding some differences and similarities for using this these techniques in whitewater and some other strategies for whitewater kayak rescues because I know people have asked me about that and um, I've, I've done a few whitewater kayak rescues and I've been rescued a few times so I've got a few ideas about what works and what doesn't and I'm going to talk about that next week. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope this has been useful. I hope it's been enjoyable. As always, I'll be, I'll be hanging out in the comments as much as I can this week. Um, so if you've got questions, leave them for me down there. I'll, I'll do my best to get back to them. And yeah, just want to say thanks for watching. Really appreciate you. Really appreciate all the people who have subscribed. If you're not subscribed, uh, you can click the, the picture, should be of my face, I think it's on here. And there might be another video you can watch on this side of the screen. Yeah, and I'll see you next week. Peace.